Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Ascend to Casual back again with another Nio uh, 2 video. And today I kind of wanted to um, discuss my findings. I just recently uh, finished the game and all of the DLC on the uh, original difficulty. And I wanted to give a more in-depth and advanced guide to inventory management for the newer players uh, and this kind of builds off of the last video that I put out about um, inventory management so the first thing I wanted to uh, talk about is something that I meant to touch on in the first video but I completely forgot and that is pretty much all these um, the usable items and so on and so forth so what I wanted to mention was like I just mentioned I just recently finished um, beating the game and I came to realize like all these things like yokai water pot, hyokoto, um, what's it called, mask and so on and so forth. I never really used this stuff. And why why am I mentioning that? Uh, the the point of the matter is go ahead and just use this stuff. Like if you have it in your inventory, um, there's no need to hang on to this. There was never a point in the game where I was like, oh man, I really wish I had held on to some Tengu fans. I mean, completely honest, I never even used one of these. I was always waiting for that point in the game where it's like, oh, if you have a Tengu fan, it'll be extremely useful and you'll be able to like one-shot the boss or something. That's, that's not really the case. Uh, so just stop worrying about not having a particular item on you. Um, assuming that it's going to be extremely useful in a particular circumstance and just kind of use it obviously be a little bit smart um and you don't want to the the problem with using items and so on and so forth is the fact that you you basically aren't able to move you you you're stationary so might not be the best thing to use in the middle of a boss fight uh but these things especially like bombs uh they as you can see with the uh, little scroll right next to the bomb, it shows, hey, this will um, actually increase your ninjutsu uh, proficiency. So there's no need to hold on to these where you could be getting one proficiency as well as these, the proficiency is based on how much damage it does. Meaning, it doesn't matter if you're using this against a boss or something like a Gaki. The amount of damage that it produces is what determines how much proficiency that you get. So, really, just use them. Just use them on any enemy. Um, it doesn't have to be a boss. Um, and it might not be the smartest thing to use this on a boss. Um, certain things might be a little bit more preferable for different circumstances. Like, you know, burning oil jar might be good for, like, the slimes um, or stationary enemies. Um, yokai water pot's really great against human enemies. Uh, it almost, like, immediately stamina breaks them or key breaks them, whatever you want to call it, staggers them. Uh, I don't know if that's true if they already see you or if that's only if you're, they're unaware of you. Uh, but I do know if they're unaware of you. Uh, this will just immediately break the stamina and put them in a grab able um, position and it, it just it's it's pretty much the same for humans as if you were to shoot off a yokai's horns um, I would keep at least one bomb on you because there are very rare instances where like some loot or whatever a path will be behind a wall that's like crumbling that you can actually throw a bomb at it so just keep one um, of I would just keep one of the regular gunpowder bombs. Um, the shrapnel bombs, they can be a decently bit more uh, useful. They do a lot more damage. And let's say you are going to run into a group of enemies that you know they're all going to aggro you. There's no way you're going to get past them without aggroing all of them. And you can't pick them off one by one. Shrapnel bombs are good to get a decent amount of damage into the entire group before they, they actually get to you. Um, but for the most part, just use them and you'll get more. I've never ran out of these, so to speak. Well, there'll be times where I run out, but like I have to actually remember to literally use these. And I used to use salt in the beginning of the game 
super useful. I don't know why I stopped using it. Um, extremely beneficial against obviously yokai. Uh, so just use your stuff. Don't worry about it. Um, especially summoners candles. Uh, these would have saved me so much heartbreak <laughs> earlier on had I just uh, had I just used them instead of trying to run back to my grave site and and pick up my stuff if if you're like right around the corner and you're like confident that you can go get your your grave site then sure but if you're not if it's like on the other side of the map and you you just didn't make it to the next shrine so you got to run all the way over there and there's a whole bunch of difficult enemies on the way just use your summoner's candles there's you you get a lot you get a lot of these so um don't worry let, let me just go inside my hut i've only recently end game like it was literally like the final mission where i finally started using uh my summoner's candles so as you can see i have like 43 of these you don't if you're not dying literally all the time which i know this game uh, can be pretty difficult uh but you you should have a decent amount of these it's you you're not you shouldn't be using these so much that you would be running low you you get a decent amount um you know i would say probably at least one or two per mission so enough of that let's kind of get into the the meat of the video so um a more advanced uh guide of essentially what i tried to talk about in my first video about inventory management so after every mission and you guys can see my my shredder build in game shredder build uh, i think it looks kind of nice uh, after every mission the first thing i do is i go into my new items and i determine okay what am i going to store away what do i want to keep uh, me i like to i'm a i'm an equipment hoarder i really like uh, unique weapons and armors especially ones that have um, set bonuses uh, so I always want to uh, to make sure that I am keeping at least one of every kind of um, set in my inventory just as my own personal uh, I guess encyclopedia if in the future I decide I want to play a different um, different build I don't have to go searching on the web uh, what all sets exist and what all bonuses I can get uh, but for the most part not really anything particularly that I want to keep um, I'm more of a fan of keeping purple items uh, versus green or you know one of a kind versus divine um, just because divine gear they, they're, they're, they're their own class um, purple like they're fine and um, I might end up getting something a little bit better I want to sell I want to dismantle and in my mind it just it's just it works out easier then I come and I go to my um, soul cores and all the common enemies are the ones that I'm not using I uh, I just go ahead and get out of my inventory as soon as possible um, if I want to soul write them or soul match them then I can I can do it from my storage inventory as long as I'm not obviously in the middle of a mission uh, so really doesn't need to be in my inbox uh, for the time being especially if I'm doing stuff and I forget um, mainly I try and make this process as quick as possible so I'm not playing the entire game you know in the uh, the blacksmith so looks like I got another forge text cool got a Kishirigama um, and that kind of brings me to another point so when you're determining what stuff what what to keep and what to get rid of uh, there comes a point in time where it's very very soon you can start crafting gear uh, better than what you're getting um, I remember when I first started getting divine gear and everything was just level 150 however you know if I wanted to uh, create uh, a weapon or armor, um, I could already make level 160 stuff. So I'm like, why am I using this level 150 stuff if I can already just make level 160 stuff? Um, with that being said, a lot of the times I like to keep gear that 
have elemental bonuses or things that I can't already create. If I can create it, then I feel like there's no need to hold on to it. So I literally have like a list in my phone of um, all of the different effects that I like or that I would want um, just so I know, hey, if I get a new item, um, I can just go ahead and get rid of that instead of holding on to it. So, hey, now I know that I have a, um, a Kashirigama that I'm pretty sure can imbue corruption. So I'm like, okay, if I have a Kashirigama that can imbue corruption, um, I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, there's, there's no need for me to hold on to it. So um, after I'm done putting everything in my inventory, I'm going to come to disassemble. And the reason why I'm doing this is because in the first video, I was very privileged. Um, I kind of did something successfully. However, I didn't understand how important it was going to be uh, later on in the future. Um, but it kind of bit me in the butt that I stopped doing it. And... Uh, when I really needed it, I was like, okay, I ran out really quickly. And what I'm essentially talking about is having Umbracite. Umbracite is going to be extremely useful uh, late game when you're trying to craft your um, ideal armor and weapons through the tempering system. Um, and you're going to want as much as possible because you the effects that you want are when you're trying to temper them, they're based on, um, you know, percent chance of, uh, of showing up there. They have their own rarity. Your whites are, I mean, that that's the vast majority of what you're going to see. They're, they're common. Yellow is uncommon. Blue is rare. Purple is, you know, like one of a kind. So obviously progressively more difficult for those effects to start showing up. And when you start wanting your yellow and your blue effects, your uh, uncommon or rare effects those like I've spent like 50 100 uh, umbracite trying to get those effects just to pop up uh, so when you're trying to find certain stuff um, it's gonna take a lot of umbracite so when you're first starting off in the game and I'm not gonna be obtuse like I see a lot of other players um, talk about is money is going to be decently important. Um, you're not going to want to wait till in game to start upgrading your stuff uh, because you're obviously your equipment is going to be essential to how well you know you do in missions to be able to complete them in the first place. So this isn't to say, oh well, no. Like, you don't need to worry about it. Just wait until new game. Just wait until new game plus. Uh, like, no. Um, you're going to want to upgrade your stuff. You're going to find stuff that you're going to want to keep that's really useful to you. Um, so, I would say half of your gear. Well, actually, I think the system that I mentioned in the first video um, of disassembling your purples and maybe your blues... Um, and selling, you know, your yellows and, and whites. Uh, that'll give you a good even split between money um, and equipment. But once you're at a point like me where you have like 5 million um, gold or I don't know what the currency is in this game, cash, uh, money is not too much of an issue. Now it can, it can definitely sneak up on you when you're, you know, soul matching, uh, a whole bunch of stuff because you're trying to get your plus tens and plus the plus things that I'm referring to for you newer players are what you see up at the top next to my level 150. Um, this can go all the way up to one um, to plus 10, uh, but you have to match the plus to their respective uh, corresponding numbers to get them up. So a plus one plus uh, soul matches to another plus one to get a plus two plus two soul matches to another plus two to get a plus three and so on and so forth so this can if you do the math you'll you can see especially for 
essentially uh, five pieces of armors and weapons, you know, two melee, two range, five pieces of armor, head, body, shoulders, knees and toes, whatever. Uh, that's going to take a lot of money um, doing this. Uh, so your best bet is to, as soon as you possibly can, start giving your um, patronage to Muramasa to get that price down. Uh, and your patronage with Toya uh, Toya to get your sell price up. Uh, but once you get a decent amount of money, your main thing that you're going to want, because you also get money from missions, the main thing you're going to want to make sure you're doing is disassembling I start disassembling everything. So originally, when I said disassemble your purple, that's because there's a difference between the umbracite and the umbracite fragments. You need 10 umbracite fragments to create one umbracite versus disassembling a purple gear will give you one umbracite. So it's a lot more cost effective to just disassemble the purple over everything else. But like I said, I'm already at the point in my game where I'm not struggling for money. So I'm just disassembling everything that I don't want. And there's a reason why I'm not touching my um, Divine Gear. It's because Divine Gear does not give you Umbersite or Umbersite Fragments. It just gives you Divine Fragments, which is useful, but I already have like 300 of those. Uh, so I'm at a good number for if or when I need to uh, create an entire set of equipment. Because uh, the max Divine Fragments that you can provide uh, for any item is 10. Uh, which is almost a guarantee that it's going to be uh, a divine. Um, and then I kind of just did the math. Okay, 10, 10 per item um, times 10 per uh, quantity of forge. Uh, or not 10 per, uh, 10 per item. Um, there's 10 items, like 2 melee, 3, 3 range, 5 equipment, uh, 5 armor. So that's 10 times 10. And then I can have 3 different uh, you know, sets. I haven't really gotten into builds yet, but, you know, 300. Okay, cool. I'm already at my number. I don't really need any more. Plus, they fetch a better price at um, for selling. And that also uh, brings up another topic that I wanted to talk about was that originally I said, hey, join a clan and sell your, um, donate your equipment. You get a lot more money that way. Um, that is partially true. So in the clan that I'm in, they... Um, they want gourds and every gourd that I give, which gourds are not a frequent drop, every gourd that I give, they gave me like 100k, 100 plus k. And I was like, okay, great, this is great. I had like five at the time, so I got a, a chunk of money. Uh, but the other thing that donates, the one that changes every 24 hours, that is not your accessories. At least it's never been for me. So. Uh, you don't need to hold on to all that stuff as well as it did get to a point in the game where I, and I did a side-by-side -side comparison of donating my equipment versus selling it I would get more money just selling the stuff versus donating it so I for the most part stopped using using that unless uh, the give ratio is extremely low per how how much money that they're giving me so if I can just donate one and I get like a 70k or 100k or whatever cool I'll do that but most of the time it gets to the point where I have to donate so many just to get the reward that it's actually uh, less cost effective than uh, just selling it outright so getting into disassembling I kind of talked while I was doing this but um, essentially what I look for when I'm um, uh, disassembling is for weapons and armors, I um, I like to sort it different. So weapons, obviously, the grade of the weapon isn't as important as the uh, the rarity of the weapon isn't as important as, as how um, effective it is. Now, obviously, usually the rarity plays a huge role into how uh, effective it is. But if I have a you know um, a lower rarity weapon that's better than a has more damage base damage than a higher uh, ranked weapon then I'm just gonna go ahead and use that uh, because normally you get more effects on your higher ranking but there are these things um, called transferables and they're marked by I know I have one in here somewhere they're marked by these the orange triangle and um, and rectangle whatever shape that is and essentially what that does is if I were to 
get the familiarity of this weapon max and I were to soul match this onto another weapon, this effect would go on to another weapon. It would not replace, let's say, for instance, this grapple damage. It would just add it to this weapon, but it does not stay. Like a transferable will always be able to then be transferred to another weapon. The uh, inheritable transfers to another weapon and it can continue to be inherited to another weapon. A transferable, once it's transferred to another weapon, it becomes just like the break, low damage, low attack damage, or strong attack, key damage. What makes that important is that, one, it can be tempered. So, block, not the greatest effect, but if I were to put this on another item, another weapon, I could then temper that. So, whereas normally a rare weapon, and obviously you don't want to have to do this a lot because the, the transferables aren't that uh, common, but the quality of the weapon will determine how many effects pre come on this so it's more convenient but if you just have a lower rarity item that's just so much better than everything else you can just put a bunch of transferables on it and get the same amount of uh, effects um, to, to use so I kind of just go through and was like okay what does not have the transferables that I want so originally in my first video I was like yeah um, if it has a inheritable, don't get rid of it. Just keep it. And that is partially true. So the ones that you really want to keep are your blue, yellow, and higher. You don't want to keep your white inheritables, at least most of them, because those are the easiest to get when you're tempering. So the purpose of these... Um, inheritables is this makes it a lot easy for you a lot easier for you to get the effects on the items that you particularly want uh, versus trying to do the whole tempering roll uh, row you could in theory find a item that has literally zero uh, inheritables and just put a whole bunch of transferables on it and just temper them all that way but that's gonna cost you a lot of umbracite um, versus hey I can have at least one transferable on each item. So, and I'm looking for a melee, let's say a melee attack key consumption. I already have this. Um, it's a decent, you know, percentage effect. I'm just gonna put it on there, and that saves me um, having to do a whole bunch of uh, tempering. So that is the uh, the benefit of having uh, a, a an inheritable uh, already pre ready to go for whatever thing that you want to soul match it to. Uh, so when you're trying to temper, you want um, the best effects on your, your, your items, uh, of course. Uh, and the ones that are obviously the best are typically the ones that are rarer to find. And I'm telling you, for, for instance, my, um, my Falcon Claws, I mean, I spent like, I think at least 150 trying to get the melee damage and melee key damage and life drain quick attack um, effects on this weapon through tempering. Um, I'm still trying to get the melee key consumption um, on this weapon, but I've still been unsuccessful and I kind of started taking a step back and I was like, okay, let me, um, let me get some more umbracite and then I'll retackle this later. Uh, so, so let me um, let me go ahead and, and kind of push out a video that uh, kind of explains uh, what I've learned. So now I'm, I'm pretty much doing that process of trying to get a lot more umbracite so I can um, I can re-roll that melee key uh, thing but the point of what I'm trying to say is I, I've spent hundreds of umber sites in re-rolling this just to make it pop up, and it still hasn't popped up. So you're gonna need a lot of umber sites, uh, especially if you're thinking, hey, you know, you have 10 pieces of equipment that you're gonna wanna probably temper, and they all have um, seven skills, uh, pretty much five, really, uh, special effects, uh, because you're really gonna wanna start playing with things that have set bonuses, and then you also have your inheritable that you're gonna wanna put on it. Um, so seven comes down to five. 
and it might take you like 20 plus rolls just to find the effect that you're looking for so just keep that in mind when you're when you're doing this so i kind of went through for weapons i go based off of ability for the reasons that i mentioned if it doesn't have any effects on it i get rid of it the reason why i have this is because this has a unique effect of fire and lightning and i can't create it like i mentioned if i could craft this then i would get rid of it but since i can't craft it yet i'm keeping it uh, and as you can see i'm not really touching any of my divine gear my green stuff uh, because that i use for different um a different purpose so right here i have an inheritable melee damage it's blue good quality great however i know i already have uh, a melee damage i know i have at least five of these or um, uh, three of these uh, for my melee weapons if I were ever needing of that effect. Uh, so literally, like I mentioned, I have a list of all my items that has effects for my weapons. I always keep at least three and I know I have one that is two that's 1.6% um, and one that's 2%. So this is a 1.4%. I don't need it. I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm just going to get rid of it uh, because it is of lower quality um, and I already have enough if I were to need to put it on another uh, equipment. Um, so just going to get rid of it and disassemble it for the extra umber site. Um, shock accumulation. These I'm honestly not too sure about whether or not I'll, I really like need these later. So I'm just kind of holding on to them for now. And the um, same thing with my uh, Kasurigama. Uh, here's another one, Life Drain Grapple. So these, there's, there's obviously worse and better versions of certain um, special effects. So you have your Life Drains, you have your Life Drain Active, um, Active Skill, low attack, strong attack, grapple, so on and so forth, um, versus like I have on my list, life drain, quick attack. So there are certain ones with obviously if you have a life drain, quick attack, if you, you find it great, keep that. Um, but these aren't bad to have at least for a temporary uh, time frame. And I only have one of these just because I know grapples don't come up often. The only reason why I have one is because I'm pretty sure I've seen, like, hey, if you play Shirigama, you grapple a lot, you're going to be able to grapple a lot. So if I were ever to start utilizing that weapon, I'll be able to have a life drain effect that will be um, useful for it. So I don't have three of these just because it's more... I already know what particular weapon that I would be using this for, you know. Maybe I might want to have two, just because if I want to um, have two different Kishirigamas, uh, otherwise I'm not keeping it. Um, I like to lock items that I know that I've already looked at um, and that I've already, uh, like, Acknowledge, okay, this is my best version of this. Um, especially after a mission where you saw all the exclamation marks, I know, hey, this is the new stuff. So it saves me a lot of time when I'm going through this and I'm trying to figure out, hey, what am I going to keep um, versus what am I going to get rid of? Um, also, I kind of hoard stuff as well. So if I know, hey, I have this in my inventory and it's better then I'm going to keep it or get rid of it, um, get rid of this one. And for instance, this situation, I don't have a this split staff. Um, I like its lore or whatever, and I don't have this in my inventory. So I'm just going to lock it up and, and push it over later. Again, we're trying to manage our inventory. That's the, uh, the primary basis of this video. So we're, uh, we're trying to get stuff out of our inventory um, as quick as possible, uh, as, as much as possible. So we can spend more time actually playing the game than, than literally managing our inventory. Uh, so as you can see here, I accidentally marked my strongest uh, 
hand cannon. I'm just going to go ahead and unmark that. Um, and then here's an example of a, a yellow inheritable. Uh, these are decent. Obviously, they're a little bit easier to find. Just a tiny bit, in my experience, easier to find than your blue inheritables. But uh, they can be still extremely useful. So make sure you keep these. Um, but again, there are some better than others. For instance, there's damage bo bonus familiarity versus damage bonus um, enemies defeated. Uh, in my experience and from my research, damage bonus familiarity is like way better than uh, enemies defeated. So if I get enemies defeated, I'm just going to get rid of that outright. Don't need it. Um, it's not that good, great of an effect. Um, but the damage bonus familiarities I'll keep. And then obviously I'll only keep like two or three of them. Uh, just just to make sure that I have enough if I ever need a bunch of those. Um, I haven't found enough supporting evidence to suggest that it's significantly better than something that's a simple attack bonus, which I can get via transferring um, from a corrupted weapon from a uh, soul core because the attack bonus uh, effect comes up pretty often on soul cores, and that's a really good way of transferring uh, soul core effects, the unique effects on soul cores to weapons um, and other items, and pretty much I kind of, like I said before when I was talking, I kind of already went through and um, already looked at my stuff and got rid of it uh, or, or already pre-selected. So I'm just kind of going through and making sure I didn't pick anything that I, I needed. And then boom, all right, cool. I've already checked through everything. We're good to go. I'll go ahead and disassemble it, uh, disassemble. And then after that, I would then come up and sell all of my... Um, all of my divine equipment that does not have a plus value because you need those to be able to upgrade each other. Uh, so I keep all my plus value stuff. Uh, but for instance, my non plus value stuff, I also then make sure it doesn't have an effect, a special effect that's better or, um, you know, a really good one that I want to keep. If not, then I determine, okay. I already have this weapon. Um, it's not one of my best weapons, uh, regardless of whether I can make it or not. It doesn't have like, I already have an imbued lightning that's b even better than this above it and it's a plus value. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sell it. Don't need to keep it. Um, and I will say for all your transferables, keep all of those. This does not matter the rarity of the effect because the purpose of this is when you transfer it to another item that you you're going to be able to temper it and change it so do not sell any of these you want to be able to have as many of these as possible to soul match to your gear uh to fill up the equipment slots uh the the special effects slots um and have as many effects on your equipment as you possibly can so keep all of these uh regardless um and I'm not going to make you guys sit through me selling all my stuff, but you guys get the gist of kind of what I do and my tips and tricks of how I manage my inventory. Uh, my goal is always trying to get it as low as absolutely possible. I can't really seem to get lower than 200 stuff in my inventory, uh, but I started off with over 400 at least. Um, and I think I had already moved my soul cores in my um, inventory before I started the video. Uh, but that is how I would get through all my stuff to have my inventory as, uh, as low as possible. As well as setting myself up for success in the future when I'm trying to uh, get the best stuff. Now when you are tempering and you are um, trying to not completely run out my best advice for that is however much umbersite that you get after a significant haul just don't use all of it always keep at least i mean you can come up with your own number i would keep at least one more umbersite than you gained uh, the goal if i were to give a rough number the goal of umbersite that you're going to need um is probably around like 1500 
um, 1,500 and that, that's 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 a lot so uh, you want to make sure that you're progressively building your umber site so that you can go through and temper your stuff so I just got I don't even know how much umber site I just got out of that thing um, umber site fragments uh, I don't know if it's gonna pop up in here uh, yeah it's 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 not gonna pop up in here uh, but I, I'll say I got at least like five umber sites then I would then come to my forge tools umber sites and then cool I can make 10 umber sites uh, so 15 that means if I'm going to temper I'm only going to use 14 to try and roll the uh, effect that I'm looking for so you really um, want to make sure you're not using your qualities or your fables unless you absolutely need to uh, qualities obviously are a little bit easier to get you can get those during your twilight missions which are kind of difficult but between which one you choose of these it doesn't matter they're just going to quick roll um, a, a random extra effect and you're just waiting to see if something pops up that you that you want so uh, just kind of go through it um, I'm also trying to like talk and do this at the same time not lose count I'm gonna assume I'm at like six seven eight nine ten okay at this point there's no guarantee that it'll be super quick that I um, I get the active skill key consumption back on this item so I'm just going to if it weren't immediately there I would be trying to find it and wrap this up so I don't exceed my 14 um, uses if it took a little bit more that's fine uh, but that is uh, that's how I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and quit that whole process right here just so I don't end up I save a little bit more on the site than I than I lost because uh, the goal is remember we're trying to get uh, 1,500 of those um, which will take us a while so start early and don't use up all your umber sites um, it's gonna become incredibly important later uh, so with that you know if you guys have any other uh, tips and tricks um, besides the one I mentioned please feel free to share comment um, and otherwise I'll see you guys later thanks bye